In this video, we're going to talk about plumbing basics and what type pipe to use. And we're going to talk about it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. So what I want to do is talk about the different materials that are available that you may run into as a service plumber or even a new construction plumber. So I'm going to talk about the different piping materials and then I'm going to get just a little bit into the fittings. That way, if you ever come across something, you at least know what we're talking about. Galvanized steel pipe is a steel pipe with a galvanic coating that actually we used to run water lines through. The problem is the galvanized pipe eroded from the inside and started clogging up and it ran into a lot of problems. If you run into an old house where you've got problems with water flow or pressure, the galvanized pipe could be your problem. Guys, that is something that we really, if we run across it now, we recommend completely changing out the piping system. And you've got a few choices here. Do you go in with copper or do you go in with PEX? These are some other pipes we're going to talk about in a minute. But let me tell you one thing I ran into a problem one time. I went into a house built in the 1930s, tried to change the angle stop. When I started twisting it, the galvanized nipple twisted. Then I had to cut open the wall behind it because there was a 3 8 nipple sticking out, a half inch line coming up. I had to cut into the wall in order to get that 90 off. Be careful what you get into sometimes and make sure that you've got a supply house nearby that can get you the fittings you're gonna need to actually fix the problem. Where galvanized is for water lines, black cast iron is actually what the sewer waste is run out of. There's old clay pipe and ductile iron pipe, which can be used for water too, but there's different kinds of pipe for the drain. So let's talk first about cast iron. Cast iron is something, like I said earlier, we used to do lead and oakum joints. I remember one of the first jobs I had to do was help my plumber pour a 12 inch lead and oakum joint on a riser. It's a lot of work and luckily we don't have to do things like that anymore. Now we've got no hub bands and we have neoprene gaskets. The gaskets that can be put in there have actually replaced the lead and oakum in a bell and spigot system. Or you can go to no hub pipe, which means there's no hub on the end of it, and that's where the no hub band comes into play. A great way to join cast iron pipe, and a good way to do it if you have to make an emergency repair. If we're using an emergency repair, say under the slab, what we do is use shear bands. The It's the CT adapter, with the stainless steel band around it to help make sure that the pipe doesn't move or shift. As a repair plumber, those of y'all that are using just regular CT adapters, those are repairs that we have to make a lot because the house shifts and the pipe gets misaligned, it leads to a clog and leads to another repair by us. So please, use the shear coupling to begin with. It'll save you, them, and me a lot of problems later. PVC has multiple uses. PVC is used out in the country as a potable water supply system. They should really use CPVC, which is a chlorinated polyvinyl chloride. CPVC is chlorinated so that it can be used for potable water use. Locally, what we use CPVC for is for hot water. So a discharge line on a TMP on a water heater, you can actually use CPVC pipe. CPVC is made for hot water, PVC it's not allowed for. PVC is actually what replaced cast iron pipe underground and in the walls. And even in some commercial buildings, as long as it's not in a common space, that if it catches on fire, you can get the PVC fumes in the air. So also talking about PVC pipe, you've got to start looking at the fittings. You've got a difference. You have DWV fittings for drain waste and vent, and you have pressure fittings, which would be used for a water supply line or even better, an irrigation system. Now also talking about the water lines, brass. And I know brass is not a pipe, but there are some brass fittings and there are some brass nipples. And when I say not a pipe, you don't buy a 20 foot piece of brass pipe to, to run a lot of things in regular residential plumbing, but the brass fittings, maybe a drop-eared L, 
maybe a trap adapter for tying in a chrome p-trap. There's a lot of different reasons that we use brass. Most of the pipe and fittings have gone to copper. So you can get copper in three different thicknesses, K, L, and M. The big deal is how it's put together and what its purpose is for as to which one you would normally use. Normally, most portable water systems are type L. You use copper fittings with lead-free solder. There are two different types of solder. There's 50-50 and lead-free. Now, lead-free on regular solder is what you use for any potable water system. About the only time you use 50-50 solder anymore is if you're soldering lead to a brass flange for a toilet. And that's something, that's a completely different video. But guys, there's different joining techniques for different types of pipe and fittings. Now, also talking about copper, remember, there's two different types. There's hard copper, there's soft copper. We use rolled soft copper here to roll out under the slab to stub up at the manifolds whenever we wanna create a stub out, or maybe we're making too long of a run in a house that's so big that maybe we need to stub up just in a wall to make a loop. The reason we do this and the reason we use soft copper is that there are no fittings under the slab. Now I'm gonna start getting into the newer pipes, PEX and Upanor. Cross-link polyethylene pipe is a plastic pipe that's literally taking the place of copper now. Now, we do a lot of copper repairs under the slab or even a yard service. Just yesterday, we replaced an old steel yard service, which was old galvanized pipe, and replaced it with a one-inch Upanor line. And I like the Upanor because it's continuously trying to shrink back to its original shape. The good thing is it's continuously tightening itself on that fitting. Now, there's different type pecs, A, B, and C. Make sure you know which one that you're using because the different type pecs are used with different fittings and different connection techniques. Let's get into a residential situation. What other kind of pipe might you have? You might have the flex hose or tubing under a lavatory or a toilet going to that fixture. Those are hoses. You can normally run down to the box store, let them know if it's going on a toilet or a lavatory, they can tell you what size end it'll need, but also they need to know what size the outlet is on your angle stop. Is it 3 8 Is it half inch? Is it flared? Is it compression? It may even be an old soldered one that you may have to take off and replace. Guys, getting the right pipe and the right fitting in the right situation is key in plumbing. Think about it, if you are running a gas line, which is what the carbon steel, the black pipe, and the galvanized are sometimes used for, if you were running a galvanized line or had to make a repair, would you want somebody to come take it, put a garden hose on each end of it, and clamp it onto it to make the repair? Guys, believe it or not, we have seen crazy things like that. Guys, if you made a repair around your house or you have questions about the different type pipes and you're not sure about what I'm talking about, how to install it or where to install it, Please leave me a comment down below, and if you've made a repair, leave a comment down below what type of pipe you used and what the repair was for, and let us know how that worked out for you. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and we'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.